So like I said, this is really short, threw this together kind of the last minute, but it's a quick demo of how to build a, a log aggregation server that you could then eventually build your own search or other things on top of. So it's a good way to take logs from a bunch of different systems, get them into one place where you can then do more with them. This is gonna be using Elasticsearch and uh, Logstash, which is another product of theirs. So I have the steps kind of written out and I'll put this up on GitHub for anybody that's interested, but I'm just gonna do a bit of quick copying and pasting and we're gonna run through this live. So hopefully nothing breaks. So first thing I gotta do is download Logstash. Logstash, for those of you who are not familiar, is simply a tool for getting logs out of a server and doing things with them. So it's pretty much all about, I thought they had a good diagram here, but um, it's pretty much all about collecting your logs, manipulating them, and then transporting them to wherever you want. Um, and you'll see these three pieces in the config file as well. They correspond to basically input, filtering, and then output. Let's see, how's our download doing? Oh, come on, internet, you're killing me. All right. So you have to install an agent on the machine that you want to Yes, the so what I'm downloading right now is the Logstash server. Um, this has to run in one central place. You can install other agents to feed the server, so you don't need to have this full big piece running on every server. You can install a very light agent anywhere and forward to the Logstash server, which can then consume, manipulate, and pass on to other data sources. I'm not sure about that logo right there. Is their actual logo? Yes, it is. Well, so Elastic is a company. Uh, uh, okay, okay. And then Logstash is yep. a product. That Elastic has, has all of these oh, products. Okay. Yep. That's all. <clears throat> so close. It's like something out of Ren and Snoopy. All right. And while that's going, I'm going to go ahead. I know I have a second now, but I'm just going to start that now so we don't run into that later. <laughs> Also going to download Elasticsearch while we're waiting. <laughs> oh man! Great. So we're going to extract that. As you can see, uh, it's built on JRuby. If the uh, files flying past aren't obvious, so it, it can run just about anywhere. All right. So we've got Logstash, and let's look at a really basic config file for Logstash. This is it. This is the simplest config you can have. It's literally to take something from standard in and spit it out on standard out. So we'll take this and we'll build off of it, but first I just want to show you this running. It takes a few seconds to spin up. Okay, there we go. Standard in, standard out. Pretty straightforward. So let's start to get a little more complicated. Let's start to feed a file into this. What I feed in here is an application log from a PHP application. start the PHP application real quick. And what I'm feeding it from is the Tech Lancaster website. Uh, what plugin are you using to write to you those little chevrons? Um, I could look it up afterwards. I don't remember off the top of my head. All right. So now I've got the applications running. And oh, there you can see. Uh, it just picked up a bunch of stuff from me starting the server. So this is the log now feeding into 
Right now it's just feeding the standard out, but I'm getting data out of my log file. So that's cool, but still not really useful. So now we need to do something with our data. So I'm going to output to Elasticsearch. So as long as I'm running Elasticsearch on the same machine as Logstash, which in this case I will be, this is all I need to do for configuration. It, the rest of it, it's smart enough to figure out on its own. So let me see if our log Elasticsearch is downloaded. Great. And let me fire up Elasticsearch. I'll get a little bit more into what Elasticsearch is in a moment. For now, I just want to show you how simple it is to start getting data into it. So Elasticsearch is now up and running. Start up Logstash again. Okay. Now let me just hit that website one more time. So I started uh, my website running locally on port 8000. This is just for that PHP application I mentioned. And I'm going to go to a route that doesn't exist because this would throw a 404 error. Great. So you see, nothing popped on the console now because we switched. We're not using standard out anymore. But we can see here, started writing to Elasticsearch. So by default, Elasticsearch only provides us with a REST API. See, this is my Elasticsearch instance running. Um, you can get any data you want out of it using just uh, simple commands with curl if you want. Uh, for me, that's a real pain in the ass. So I'm going to grab a front end interface for it real quick. So I need to shut down Logstash, shut down Elasticsearch, and we can just grab a community plugin for Elasticsearch to do this for us. And the one I'm call, using is called Elasticsearch HQ. And all the dots. Wow, that's, that is way more dots than I got last time. I think it's just throwing out 10 dots per second or something. Great, so now we've got our plugin. Let the user know we're doing something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so restarting Elasticsearch with the plugin installed. And just firing up Logstash again. All right, so let's go look at this new plugin now. All right, so this is my plugin that was installed. This is an open source front end interface for Elasticsearch. You can hook it up to an Elasticsearch cluster and see everything from some of the health of the uh, cluster to the indexes. And then you can actually start to do some querying in here as well, which is what I want to show you now. Um, so you can see we have 78 documents in here. This is a document store. Um, and Logstash has already created an index for me. So we can go ahead and start querying this. Let's just take a look at host and message for now. All right, so here are my logs. They're marked with, they're already marked by the host they came from and the full message of each line in the log. So from here, if I wanted to look for exceptions or something like that, I can do a simple full text search. Well, maybe. There we go. Do a simple full text search to start at a very, very basic level searching the contents of my logs. It's, you know, in 10 minutes, I've got a way better interface to work with my logs now already than trying to parse through log files. Um, where this gets really nice is 
if I was throwing logs from multiple services and multiple servers in here, they're all in one place that's queryable. So I can start to query against all of them. Um, furthermore, you know, this is like the high level overview. Um, if you look at the structure of this message, um, let me switch back to showing multiple messages here. If you look at the structure of these messages, they're kind of in a standard format. You have time, event, followed by message, and certain other pieces of data. Um, what we could start to do with Logstash is start to implement a third option here called a filter. And I don't know if I'll be able to do a good example of this here. Um, but what filter will allow us to do is actually pre-process these messages and break them into individual fields. So we can pull out um, the timestamp. We can pull out if there are IP addresses on every record. We can pull those out. And Logstash has a ton of plugins to assist with pulling these pieces of data out of the logs and into separate queryable fields to make it easier to write complex queries. So you're not just searching through one giant text field of your log data. Um, I just can show you a brief example of this. If we jump back to their documentation, they have a really good example of the way they handle Apache logs. If you change your filter and restart the server, the old messages won't be won't have the extra fields or whatever you created, right? That's correct because it's a document store. You can add fields at any given point, but what's in there is already in there. Do you know if there's a way of going back and applying those filters to old fields? You can have it reparse the file. If, okay. So if you're if you're looking at a file, um, by default, Logstash does like a tail method where it'll pull like the last bit of the file okay. um, when it fires up. But you can tell it to start at the beginning, huh, okay. and then it will reparse the entire file every time. Downside is if you do that multiple times, you get duplicate entries then too. Yeah. So um, that's actually a good point. You can dedo uh, your messages as well, um, which I wouldn't recommend doing with logging because you want to see multiple messages. Um, but you could dedo them. Uh, possibly even by looking at the timestamp and the message. And if that is not unique, you could, you can generate a unique uh, hash off of that combined field. And then when that matches, it wouldn't get reinserted into the database or it wouldn't even be passed on to the database for insertion okay. or to Elasticsearch. Okay, so their example is in the advanced section here, I believe. Right. Okay, so you can see here they have a similar log file. This is an Apache log right here. Um, and they already have a pre-made filter for this for parsing combined Apache logs. So it will take this log and break it into these fields, which you can then query against. But it's real powerful because you can start to build your own applications and things on top of this too if you want. So from Elastic with Elasticsearch, what we really have, you know, I have this interface that I can use to query it, but what I really have here is a REST API. By default, Elasticsearch gives you a REST API for everything. So what I've gotten is I for very little effort, I've gotten a REST API for all of my logs across as much of my infrastructure as I want to set up. Now of course Security, that's up to you. Yeah, there's no security here yet. That would need to be put in, of course. And there are a lot of other considerations, but with the bare minimum, you know, this is a start towards Can you better configure it to start up to fire up messages, emails based on yep. um, prototypes? Yeah, so Elasticsearch has other things to help with that. Um, not all of Elasticsearch stuff is free. For example, um, they have something called Watcher, which is a it's a commercial plugin. Uh, you can try it free for like 30 days or whatever, and then it's a it's a reasonable fee. Um, and what Watcher does is it sits on top of the data store, and every X amount of time runs a pre-written query that you set up, and then does things based on the results of the query. So you could say every 15 minutes, 
run a query for new logs. If I have a new log with X statistics, fire off an email, that kind of thing. That's a commercial plugin they have. Um, another thing, talking about commercial plugins, they also have a commercial plugin specifically just for security. So it's basically a bolt-on security interface for Elasticsearch. But the core of Elasticsearch and Logstash, both of which I just set up here, those are open source. They're on GitHub. They're free. You can have at them. And since Court's not here for night, here tonight, if you have any questions, ask him because he works for them. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Um, so I know that you know, logs are always like better, like just, just all the programs are spitting out the logs and all the events and all the stuff. And I keep thinking about Matt here, who's the lawyer, and you know they have to do research, doing like lots of logs. I mean, it could. Something like that? Um, I'd say, like, the difference is with the data that they're dealing with, it's something that, where this gets handy is you're dealing with a lot of data being produced that you need to filter through. I think for them, they're, they're always filtering through the same data, right? You're talking about just legal information, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the hardest part is going to be modeling your data in a way that's going to be useful um, and getting the data in. I was going to say, I can imagine a lot of the documents are written in like either different formats or just like not standardized where you can say like, oh, this is the person that wrote the yeah, document, this is the if, state it applies to. Yeah, like you know, if it's, if your data is not standardized, the best this is going to be is a good text search engine, yeah. you know. There is, but it's probably takes a while for it to get there. There's, uh, there's no standard system. Basically, every uh, state, county, uh, government entity has a different way of, a different source of um, yep. putting out that data. And a lot of it's, you know, the, the pay service. What you're paying for is is that, that aggregation of that data. Yeah, well, so that's interesting because that's something else you can do with a system like this. And it's actually kind of why I started looking into this in the first place was doing some aggregation. Um, but some of the other things that Logstash can do, what you know, I showed a file. Logstash, Logstash can actually reach out to other sources too. So it can pull from RSS feeds. It can scrape websites. It can hit a REST API. Um, you can set it up to consume just about any data source you want. Um, and you can make it, an, if this makes sense, you can make it an API endpoint on its own, too, to put data into Logstash for pre-processing before it's then in, put into a central data store. So you can build an aggregation service on top of something like this right. to, and use these tools to standardize the data from all the different sources. Assuming the individual sources Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. If you otherwise, if you have hand jam text, you have hand jam text. There's nothing you can do about that except. Well, like this has like built-in analysis software. Yep. Like Splunk will do that. It'll do like indexing, mm -hmm. just off of uh, machine learning. I don't know if Elastic does it. Um, paid plugins. <laughs> yeah. For everything with Elastic, paid plugins in a way. Um, there's a big project called Kibana. Um, which is sort of like the interface we're looking at here, but much more robust. Um, and it allows you to sort of build your own dashboards and queries out of data and do some more advanced things with your data. Um, nothing quite to the level of machine learning. That Anything in that regard, you're still going to have to kind of dig in and figure out what you want it to do. But it has the, the systems there, I think it would be easier to write on something like this. 
What's Moshe with a lightning bolt? That looks like I bought that one quite a lot. Which one? Moshe with the lightning bolt to the left of the screen, the blue button. Oh, that's the automatically generated name of the node. Okay. Uh, whenever Elasticsearch fires up, it automatically generates a name for the node. And apparently it picked that one. It had a lightning bolt. I'm like, that is definitely yeah. what you need to collect. Yeah, so this just has general stats of the running node. Um, let's see if you can see it here when it fired up. Yeah, it just it's an automatically generated one. So if I kill it, fire it up again, Glob Herman. It is, like I said, <laughs> random <laughs> name generator. Oh, the first time it was like Franklin something. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the name of the version. That's what I was, that's what Mike, I was supposed to I was like, oh, no, the it is called Franklin. It's something. randomly generated so that as you spin these <laughs> up in clusters, they don't conflict with themselves. So you can randomly spin up a bunch of servers. And because they have, these are kind of set up to be distributed and eventually consistent. Um, you can have nodes coming and leaving as needed. So you don't have some um, IT guy uh, just uh, having fun naming them all Lord of the Rings characters? <laughs> I'm sure you could <laughs> if you Can't wanted. Can specify a name? <laughs> like a static name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I just want to show you an example of uh, the fingerprinting to dedupe when you're taking in data. I have an example of that. I think where I put it. Somewhere in here. Okay, so this is what I'm working with. I'm pulling in two RSS feeds. And then what I'm doing with the filter method here is generating a unique ID um, that is really an SS, an, a SHA-1 fingerprint based on the message body so that um, you know, if the server goes down or I repool the RSS feed, if I get the exact same R body back in an RSS feed, I don't, have to I don't have to restore that, I just throw it out. So this just generates a fingerprint based off of the message field, which is the body, and it uses that as the document ID in Elasticsearch, so it prevents duplication. Cool. Well, that's all I had. Thanks, guys.